Hi, this is Katrina. Today in my Lightroom workflow, I'm going to finally take you to the develop mode. And in the develop mode, we are going to have some fun. This is where we get to really begin to play with our photos. So I'm starting in the library mode, selecting the one photo that I'm going to edit, and um, then simply clicking on D, and that's gonna take us into the develop module. And in the develop module, you'll notice that you have a lot of options when you look down at the right hand panel and it can be a little daunting but we're going to keep it really simple today and we're going to stick into in two of the panels we're going to start with the basic um, panel and in the basic panel one of the things to keep in mind is that they've made it really easy for you. We're going to work from the top to the bottom and in doing so get the best edits that we can. Now I don't adjust absolutely everything for every photo but I am always going to work from the top to the bottom and in Lightroom 4 the basic panel has really changed and it becomes really important that you work from the top to the bottom because a selection on of one slider is going to then affect the the subsequent sliders and the range that you have available so make sure that you do go from a top to the bottom so with that, with my photo, I'm going to start with adjusting the white balance. And there are two ways that I can do that. I can select the eyedropper and I want to find a bright area, neutral area in my photo. And one of the ways that you can do that, one trick that I learned a while ago is to find a spot where your RGB percentages on the bottom are almost equal. And so you can just travel around the photo some until you find that spot and then when you find it I had it and I lost it when you find that spot you can click and that will often give you a great white balance um, choice you don't want to go to anything that is um, too too bright that is clipped you just do want to find that neutral area all right, and you can see, then we get that result. I can also just move the slider, which is what I tend to do most often. You can go in here and choose uh, these as well. I shot it with flash. But you can see when I use the flash, it is, when I use their flash setting, it comes out really green. So I'm not gonna go with that. Double click on white balance. That's gonna take me back to the um, original setting. I can adjust that some, there we go. I've calibrated my monitor, so I'm gonna just eyeball it to something that I like, there we go. Then the next setting in the in order is gonna be exposure. And the exposure is actually the most important setting of all of these because it's going to set the parameters for the rest of your sliders. I'm going to just eyeball it. You can look at the histogram some too. I like to just eyeball it. I'm going to move until I like what I see. There we go. I'm going to stop right about there. And sometimes the thumbnail image is going to give you a better view than the, the large one. So I'm going to be looking back and forth between the two. Then I'm going to go to contrast and contrast is going to lighten the highlights and darken the shadows. It's going to, you want to really focus on your mid tones as you do this. One thing that you can do with all of your sliders is slide it to the right and then slide it to the left. That really gives you an idea of what is happening with that slider. So I'm just going to make a slight adjustment here to the right. There we go. Then I'm going to go to the next, which is highlights. And highlights is going to adjust your brighter tones in the image. We're going to typically want to take this to the left. I'm going to want to take a look again, see what happens when I go all the way to the left, and then see what happens all the way to the right. I'm just going to slide it a tad bit to the left. Then shadows are going to darken things and this typically is going to go to the right let's see you're going to darken your shadow so you're going to go to the left see what happens go to the right see what happens i'm just going to bump this up a tiny tiny bit to open up some of those shadow areas i'm watching his pants right under his shirt 
and his face mostly here. There we go. Whites and blacks I'm only going to adjust if I have clipping on either the left or the right hand side of the histogram. So if I have an underexposed or overexposed image, I would want to use those. That is one really big difference in Lightroom 4 compared to Lightroom 3. So in this photo, I don't have any clipping, so I'm going to leave that alone. Then I'm going to move on to Clarity. And Clarity is going to give me local area contrast. Again, it's primarily going to affect the midtones. You can see this best if you go all the way to the right. You can see that it gives me a very HDR image. If I go all the way to the left, I get a very fuzzy image. So um, depending on what result you're looking for, I'm going to just slide this tad bit to the right. You're going to want to um, keep this and your highlights and shadows. You're going to want to really stay under 50 unless you're doing something really extreme. All right, and then next is vibrance and saturation. And sometimes these are really easily confused. So I want to show you um, how the difference by, by jumping down to saturation. Saturation is going to change all of the colors in the image. And just go ahead and watch as I go to the right. Every color is affected, every single one. See how they, much they change. And then saturation takes them all out of the image. I can click on saturation, double click on that, takes it back to zero. Vibrance is really going to be more color specific. So it's going to look at the intensity of each of the colors and then change them according to that color. So it does, it's not quite as extreme. So I'm just going to bump the vibrance up a tiny bit. And there we go. I have an image that um, I'm happy with an image that is edited, ready to go. Now, obviously there are a lot of other choices that I have, but those, those are the basic edits I most often do. The next thing that I would do is look at um, how I'm gonna crop the image. And I do sometimes crop, and this is an image I'm going to crop because there's some extra stuff in the photo. And I can select the aspect ratio here. And I know that I wanna make this square. It is going to end up on a scrapbook page. So I'm going to go ahead and just make it square right now. And it's going to show me what that square looks like. I'm going to just play with it a little bit. This is a raw file, so it is a large file. I've got a lot of area to work with. And I'm going to go ahead, leave it right about there. And there we go. I could be done. But if um, you want to see what this photo is going to look like in black and white, we've got a couple of quick, quick things that we can do easy peasy press V that's going to give me a quick view of what this photo looks like in black and white now I don't like the way his face looks in this in black and white um, it his his skin doesn't look natural to me so I'm going to go ahead and go into the black and white panel and I'm going to make some adjustments so when we get there it's going to give me the default adjustments that it applied and then I'm going to go to the targeted area adjustment tool and click on that. I'm going to pull it right on over to his face. I'm going to click on his face and then I'm going to use my up and down arrows and I'm going to change that those tones in his face. I'm going to remove some of that that dark red color out of his face. And you'll notice the red and the orange sliders are moving to the right. Changing that up some and then I can just slide it on over to the green. Change that until I get a a tone that I'm happy with. Do the same in his pants. And then I can I can do the same by moving around to the other colors. Just have to watch. I'm really going to watch his face because that's where a lot of, of the reds and oranges in the image are being affected. But you can see now, the, I go to the wall, the green and the yellow is being changed. So not a lot of difference there. But I just really want to go for some a good array of mid-tones in here so that I don't have a flat black and white image. So it's kind of popping off the page just, just a bit. There we go. Now, that gives me a quick black and white image. I thought that was fitting for today since today's prompt is without color. There are other things I could do. There are many other things I can do in next week's video. I'm going to walk you through how I could set this these settings now to multiple photos. And then in a future video, I'll walk you through setting a preset 
and um, leveling. So lots to cover. I uh, hope you will leave me a comment telling me what you liked about today's video and what you'd like to see in future videos. Thanks so much.